All right. Good morning, everyone. We're letting people in. Whoop. Our guest, as I'm moving the computer around, our guest is Joel Abramson. Um, he's officially the development director of the Nashville Ballet. But uh, Joel is going to talk to us today about Hanukkah. And tomorrow is the first night of Hanukkah this year. Um, Joel, how are you doing this morning? I'm great. Uh, thank you very much for uh, having me join you today. I'm I'm very excited for Hanukkah. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. Well, um, I'm looking forward to the discussion. It really ought to be a great discussion. Um, it's a beautiful day outside. It's really cold. I will tell you that I got up early this morning, and um, <clears throat> um, usually about this time during during December there is a homeless memorial service for those we lost who were experiencing homelessness during the year. And so I just came from that and there was a um, nice crowd and um, a lot of, a lot of important things that were said. And uh, it's one of those things that um, I'm encouraged, <clears throat> you know, we, every year we talk about the idea of, of not having another one that we don't want to lose sure. people. Um, and so we, we always hope that the next year we don't have to do it, but unfortunately we do. But, um, you know, as you sit there and listen to that discussion, you try to figure out better ways for the city to um, help people who are experiencing homelessness. We don't ever want to lose anybody. So anyway, that was going on this morning. Uh, obviously, we're about uh, a week and a day before Christmas, but we're a day before Hanukkah. Uh, so while we're letting a few more people get in on this call, I usually ask my guests a non-relevant question to start with, and uh, yours is going to be, and it's always about usually what's behind you on your wall. So what is that? Well, one looks like something important, and the other one looks like a map. What is that? <laughs> um, they're both really great. Uh, so this here is a, a cross-stitch that my great aunt made. Um, it has a, a dreidel on there and it just says happy Hanukkah. It's just something that has been passed down in my family and I love it. Um, the other one uh, is uh, the five year anniversary gift is wood, I believe. And my, my amazing wife knows how much I love Nashville. So she got me this beautiful, beautiful drawing wood, wood etch, I guess, of our city. So that was your, that was a wedding anniversary present from your wife to you. Yeah. Yeah, isn't what, that great? And, and it's wood. What did you get her? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure I remember what I got her. I think I got her. Uh, oh, I got remember now. I should know this. I got her this um, massive uh, framed uh, canvas. So there's wood inside of it, right? Of um, our wedding. Uh, we were, there's this beautiful picture of everyone coming together, surrounding us and dancing the hora. Um, and her face is just lit up and it's just one of my most cherished memories and it hangs in our dining room. I could go grab that, but it, it's, it's a lot to carry. Okay, well, don't, <clears throat> yeah, we'll take your word for it. How long have y'all been married? We've been married for almost 10 years now. Okay, all right. Well, congratulations. Thank and, you. Um, make sure you keep that list of uh, making sure that you know what you're supposed to get on that ninth and 10th anniversary. Um, I didn't follow it and I think I got in trouble. <laughs> Hey, we, we have a big one coming up, so I, I got some, some good plans in mind. All right. Well, uh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, well, and I love that this is your great-grandmother that made this or your grandmother? Uh, this is my, my great-aunt. Your great-aunt. Okay. And it's something that passed down to you, or did she make it just for you? Uh, it was passed down. It, it was actually a gift um, from her uh, to my grandmother. And when my grandmother passed away, I was able to bring it into our home. Okay. Okay. I got it. Well, it's, it's very, it's a very nice, and I think it's a very great thing that you've got, that you've Thank got. Thank you very much. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So let's talk. Um, well, my first question to all my guests um, is tell me a little bit about yourself. Where, where are you from? Um, you know, what have you been doing? What do you, how did you get to the Nashville Ballet or how did you become the director of development at the Nashville Ballet? Sure. Uh, so Joel, tell me all about yourself. Um, so I am originally from Orlando, Florida, um, spent 18 years of my life there, and then eventually uh, kind of started moving around um, to Ohio and Virginia, 
And then uh, a really exciting professional opportunity arrived here in Nashville uh, to work for the Jewish Federation and Foundation. Um, and I took the job and it was pretty much designed to help build and strengthen our community here in Nashville, uh, particularly connecting with our Jewish community. Uh, I spent three years working there. I went to grad school and uh, the moment I had the opportunity to come back to Nashville, I took it. Um, my wife and I love this community. We are raising uh, two beautiful boys here. So we really do consider ourselves to be to be rooted in this community. Um, even my parents moved here to be a part of it. So we're, we're so proud um, to be a part of Nashville. Um, and uh, just kind of navigating my professional career, there was a really exciting opportunity to uh, fundraise in support of the arts. Um, I'm a huge fan. I actually grew up uh, taking ballet classes um, starting at eight years old um, and really fell in love with the performing arts and how it can uplift and strengthen our communities and tell incredible stories. And uh, so there was an opportunity to fundraise and support Nashville Ballet. And so here we are in the midst of the holiday season. Uh, can, I, can I do a, a plug for Nutcracker? Is that, that sure. great? If you can. <laughs> <laughs> Nutcracker continues this weekend and all of next week. And uh, it's if you haven't seen it, it's it's again something very special for this community, for the Nashville community. It's Nashville's Nutcracker. Um, if you haven't seen it, I'd highly recommend it. It's a blast. Um, well, so let me ask you. OK, so tickets still available, right? Tickets are still available, but limited. It's, it's sold very well this year. OK, um, I've seen the Nutcracker several times. Is there. Um, is there uh, any change in the story or is it basically the same Nutcracker story? Uh, so the, this Nutcracker is, is really special because it's set here in Nashville. Um, so when you go, you'll see in the, in the set pieces and in the setting, all these little Nashville touches. And, and Paul Vasterling, the artistic director, has done some really incredible things with it. Um, and even, well, I don't want to give away some of the, the special surprises on the way, <laughs> but there's, there's some extra cool stuff happening this year, some new stuff and some, some extra surprises. All I, right. I highly recommend going to see it if you can. Let me ask you this. Um, I have a almost a three-year-old granddaughter. Still too young? Uh, you know, I think three is like right on the on the cusp of of, of being able to sit through the performance. Um, we we took my son when he was three and he made it through, but he's definitely a little little squirmy at times. All right, and I'm 62. <laughs> is that is that probably the cut off for going to see it because I get squirmy after a while too. No, no, it's um it, it's really broken up nicely. Um and it's it just continuously draws you in scene after scene. It's beautiful, it's funny, it's majestic. Um I I, I highly recommend seeing Nashville's Nutcracker. It's unique and it's incredible and, and totally worth it. So do do kids um when they do come, do they bring their own nutcrackers? Some Can do. They, uh-huh. But uh, we actually uh this is funny because I, I didn't I didn't plan on like coming here just to like plug Nutcracker. Um, what's really neat about our Nutcracker is you you can actually buy um, a, a Nutcracker of our unique Nutcracker and our unique Mouse King that you can't find anywhere else in the world because um, they resemble the exact ones that we have on stage. So a lot of people come and they'll buy their own versions of it and they look really great up on the mantle next to each other. Just a, All just right. a great opportunity. <laughs> just a, let me ask you one other question about the Nutcracker. And, and then I'll, then I'll, I'd like to get, well, at the end, we'll talk about the times again, but the, the Nutcracker itself, if, if, if the Nutcracker were to walk around downtown Nashville, would most people recognize that's who it was? I think so. The, the, the head's pretty big. Yeah. Um, and uh, sometimes it happens. We, we have some great partnerships across the community where we've, we've brought our Nutcracker out. It's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Okay, well, I was curious about that. Okay, one, I thought of one other question. So um, uh, the Nashville Ballet, does it, does the ballet company travel? Does it get to go to other places and perform? Uh, so sometimes it does. One, one of the really great things about Nashville Ballet specifically um, is that the, the company, they live here. They are a part of the Nashville community. Um, and so we do these incredible performances and productions all over the community. Um, but 
we're also fortunate enough to occasionally do a few touring pieces. Last year, um, we took a, a production on tour, um, and we were also recently featured on PBS's Great Performance series. Um, and of course, if for whatever if for whatever reason you can't see uh, Nutcracker live in theater, uh, it'll actually be um, for free on television on Christmas Day. So definitely tune in to watch on uh, News Channel 5. Very good. Do we know what time it's going to show on Christmas Day? Uh, I think it's one o'clock, but don't hold me to that. I don't, I don't know offhand, but um, it was one of the great, really, the really great things that um, happened during the pandemic when we were not able to do live and in-person, um, you know, performances. We took a really strong pivot um, and did a, a professional uh, recording filming of it. It actually won an Emmy, which was really exciting. Um, so I, again, just all these great opportunities to connect with Nashville Ballet and to experience easily what is just an incredible holiday classic. What a, what a, what a great thing. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, I was going to tell you that I have a first cousin that has a dance company in Portland, Oregon. And I wasn't sure whether those groups ever connect. Uh, the company's name is Whitebird. Um, so anyway, we can talk more about that later. But right. um, yeah, he invites groups to come in and perform in Portland. So just letting you know. Okay. Well, let's get to the main topic now that we've taken up a lot of time. The main topic <laughs> of today's conversation, which is Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Uh, again, Hanukkah starts tomorrow night. And um, what we, what we want to do in this program is just talk about Hanukkah. How did it get started? Most people have heard the stories of lighting the eight candles, but um, why don't you take it from there and just start? And every so often I'll ask you a question when I get lost um, and just tell us kind of, you know, how it got started and what it means, what it means today and, you know, how it's practiced. Those are great questions. Um, so Hanukkah is uh, known as the, the Festival of Lights. Um, you kind of already referenced that we, we light these eight candles over eight days. And you're right, this year Hanukkah will begin tomorrow night. Um, but that's not always the case. It doesn't, it doesn't follow um, the, I guess, calendar for, that we use for the normal year. It, it shifts around um, based on uh, the Hebrew calendar. So next year, I believe, it'll actually start on December 7th. Um, there was a year, uh, it actually crossed over with Thanksgiving, which is very rare and kind of cool. Um, we had a lot of, uh, turkey themed menorahs that year, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, but Hanukkah has this, this story, um, where, uh, around, uh, 200 BCE, I believe, um, the Syrian Greek, uh, empire was occupying, uh, Jerusalem. Uh, under this uh, emperor named Antiochus, and uh, this group of Jewish freedom fighters led by Judah, uh, the Maccabees, um, took back the temple. Uh, but when they when they went in there, they found that it had been desecrated, and there were idols everywhere. And um, they went to go light the menorah, and they used oil to light it. Um, and they 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 couldn't find any oil; all the pots had been broken. And so they, they finally, finally, after digging, they found this one pot of oil and it only had a little tiny bit of oil in it, enough that would have lasted just for one night. And they said, fine. They lit the menorah. Um, it was good, but they didn't have enough to, to go on. And so uh, sure enough, uh, the oil uh, lasted. It just kept refilling or there was enough. And it, it lasted all these eight days, which was the amount of time they needed to acquire more oil. And so this is the miracle of Hanukkah um, and why lighting the menorah and oil are such key elements to how we celebrate. So tell me, um, go back to the, so it, somebody was holding the, was it the temple or holding the, okay. So the some a group city, the temple, uh, the Torah was forbidden from being studied. It was not a great time, um, but we took it back. All right. So uh, a group of people came and took it back. And then in order to, was it in order to celebrate the victory? I, I, it was, it was more just like a, a ritualistic thing that would, that would always take place. Okay. But was it celebrating uh, the official days of Hanukkah? And that's why they were looking for the oil to light the menorah or it was Hanukkah just kind of stemmed out of that. Because okay. we, yes. we, we commemorate Hanukkah because they were able to take back 
the temple. And uh, because the oil lasted, we commemorate this with the holiday of Hanukkah. Okay. And so the other question was, did the oil keep refilling itself or was there simply the oil miraculously was able to keep lighting the, the eight candles over the eight days? Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> when, okay. I, when I was growing up in, in school, they said like there was the miracle is that it kept refilling over and over again and always had just enough to, to help it get to the eight days. It's, you know, it's a story. So. Okay. You, I mean, you weren't there, so you don't I, I, I was not. <laughs> okay. I, I wasn't there either. So, so, so somehow the, the oil it, that they found was enough to keep the, the last candles. eight days. And so we, the we, we light candles for eight days and we celebrate for eight days and it's a lot of fun. Okay. So tell me, um, okay. Once that happened and they celebrated the miracle of the lighting of the candles, how did it become an, an annual uh, celebration? That's a great question that I'm not really sure. Um, okay. I mean, there, what, but... what, I, what I'll share is probably a lot of things that kind of stem from um, generation to generation, you know, like my ancestors and the ancestors before them celebrated this annual tradition year over year over year. And so here we are today still commemorating this victory, um, still commemorating the celebration and the holiday itself has kind of adjusted um, into these modern times, especially in, in America uh, to be celebrated. All right. So, so it's, how, how long is Hanukkah, how long has the, this thing, this tradition been celebrated? When did, when did, when was the first Hanukkah? I don't know when the first Hanukkah was really. Okay. okay. <laughs> for, All for, right. me, for me, it was 36 years ago. Um, but okay. Okay, but I, there were some before 36 years ago, right? Yeah, I mean, th this is a, this is a, a holiday that's been celebrated uh, forever. Essentially, since since we retook this, it, it became an, an annual thing. It's 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 the way we commemorate this incident that took place. All right, and it follows the Jewish calendar. So, yes. what is the what is the um, when does Hanukkah happen every year? When does it start? So Hanukkah technically happens on the the twenty fifth of Kislev, which is uh, a date in the Hebrew calendar. It's kind of based on the the lunar cycles. Um, which is why, as I kind of mentioned, it'll, it shifts year to year. Um, yeah, it, 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 and next year it'll be December 7th. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So we now know that it follows the Jewish calendar and it's the first night is, would be on the 25th day of it's, uh, Kuflev. Kislev. Or Kislev. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So that would be the first night and it follows along for those eight nights. Now. Let's talk for people who don't necessarily know. Wh when is the first candle lit? Do I already have a gift for my wife every night? <laughs> <laughs> See, I, uh, so that, that, uh, I wasn't sure if that was for you or for me, but uh, yeah. So uh, tell me, uh, you can answer that question if you want, or you don't have to, but. Um, <laughs> I do, but, I, okay. I do have gifts for her. Um, the, the Hanukkah candles, uh, so uh, Jewish holidays, all of them, not just Hanukkah, start on the evening uh, before. So like technically the first day of Hanukkah will actually be uh, Monday, but we start our holidays the night before Erev. So the first night of Hanukkah will be celebrated Sunday night. And we'll, okay. we'll light, uh, we'll light our, our candles and more and more each night. Okay. So um, the first candle is lit at what time? Uh, so the, the first candle is lit um, when the sun goes down. And um, if the sky is nice and clear, you can do it based on when there's like three stars in the sky. This year, I believe, at least in Nashville, right? Because it depends on where you are. Um, it'll be right around 4.45 p.m. All right. So, and what is the, what is the um, history behind the three stars? I think that's just like a, a guarantee that it is officially sundown, you know? Oh, oh okay. But if you can if see it's stars, cloudy, it's yeah, not, if it's cloudy and you can't see anything, then do you, then you, light, you light the first candle at sunset? Is that right? Yeah. You, you, you just kind of wait it out. Sun goes down. It's definitely dark out. We're good. Okay. All right. Um, are all the rest of the candles lit at sunset? Um, so 
Yes, but they're so each night we'll add an additional candle. Um, and I actually like I brought some props with me just to kind of show what we have going on here. So this is a okay. menorah, uh, a Hanukkah menorah. Um, and you can kind of see I'm I, I, I'm not sure if the mirroring works, how that works, but um, we have uh, eight spots here to celebrate the eight nights of Hanukkah. And we have the shamash or the attendant, which we use to actually light the other candles. And this this is a very like traditional menorah uh, that was a gift to me from the temple, uh, Obay Shalom, one of our great synagogues. Um, but they come in a lot of like fun different ways. Uh, this was another gift I got. It's uh, one of my favorite menorahs. It's a bike chain. Oh, very clever. So you okay. can be very artistic with them. Um, and this was another, actually, I've never bought uh, a menorah. They're all gifts that I've gotten. This one I got when my son was born, a gift from a friend. Uh -huh. cool. You can see all the little candle holders. Now, tell me about, so I refer to the main candle as shamish, but is yeah. it shamash? Is there a different way to pronounce it? It's shamash, shamash, it, it all works the same way. It's, it's just like how we translate things. Okay. So um, the sh the candle that, that uh, the shamash, uh, on the dragon that you just held up would go, does it always go in the middle or does it go, can it it's go just, as a head? It's elevated. Elevated. It's, it's always the one here. I'll, I'll show you this one. You can see it's just a little higher. Um, right. okay. I don't necessarily know whoop, there we go, why it's higher, um, but it is always. Is. And we use that one to light the other candles. And so each night we'll add one more whoop, that focus is fun. One more candle. And so we get to eight. And when you have all all nine candles up there, it's it's beautiful. Okay, so when you light the when you you light the shamash first, yes, and then you light the first candle. Yeah, we we'll light this one, oh. and then okay. Was, how long how long do you leave it lit? Um, um, I, I'll let them burn out. Okay, so you let the, you let the first candle clean the wax out. <laughs> okay, so but do you do you keep it lit throughout the night, or do you? Um, you know, or do you relight the first candle and then the second candle on the second night of Hanukkah? I, I let them burn all the way down. Um, I'll typically okay. like put some like aluminum foil underneath just to keep it safe. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I got it. Yeah, we'll we'll let them burn all the way down, and then we'll, the next night we'll restock all the candles. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, all right. Second night. Uh, let me ask you this because I don't know this either. Do the different do the nights represent different things? Nope. Okay. Just the next night. An another okay. another night to celebrate, another night to gather with friends and family. Okay. Is there um is there a tradition with lighting the candles? Um I I didn't realize this until um until my kids got to school that there are some amazing songs regarding Hanukkah that are just beautiful. And I really, I really love. Um, is there a tradition of singing Hanukkah songs at the lighting of the candle or no? So yes, there are prayers that we say um, that we uh, say as we're lighting candles. Um, and then in addition to that, there are so many exciting um, and joyful songs that we sing just to celebrate the Hanukkah, um, just, just uh, coming together and, and singing about uh, latkes and dreidels and the menorah and and it's <laughs> I, I will not be singing for you but they're a lot of fun all right so um so if people wanted to find out traditional hanukkah songs that are sung around this time and the uh, gelts you're right and the gelts i brought some gelts okay so okay so tell me about the gelts uh so gelts uh gelts are these little coins um yep. but they're actually uh chocolate Right. Are you going to eat one for us right now? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm. And and how did that and and how is that associated with Hanukkah? Besides the fact that you're eating one right now. It's delicious. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I'm again. I brought all these fun props with me today. I know we're going to get to the dreidels in a minute. But that's, well, so that's that's how they're associated. Oh, okay. All right. The, the gelt is used for dreidels. You want me? You want me to go into dreidels now, or you want me to wait? Yeah, going to dreidels, uh, but um, I do I do need to caution the audience that um, I didn't I don't think I knew that I just sometimes picked up the the chocolate and ate it without <laughs> playing dreidel. So uh, go ahead and explain how I'm supposed to have done it. So um, 
uh, the gelt is used to play dreidel. And so I, I brought I brought this dreidel here. Um, just to, I, I got I have all these fun things. And I brought a, a cutting board because I wanted to really show the fun of it. Um, so what kids will do and adults too, because who doesn't love to play games, um, is they'll they'll gather around and they'll each put in a piece of gelt. Oop, gonna slide away if I do that. And then they'll spin the dreidel, which is a top. So that's no, not too bad, right? Right, you did good. Thank you. Um, see if I can actually make it land without falling off. Uh, perfect. And if right. you're if you're really talented, um, you can you can spin them. Oh, I almost got it upside down. Guess I'm not that okay. talented. Okay. So so everybody puts in a piece of chocolate. I yes. Guess. And okay. so the the dreidel um, has four sides on it. And so yeah. I brought um, my kids' big plush dreidel just to illustrate uh, things a little easier. Okay. So, um, okay. So now that you've got a large dreidel in your hand, even though it's your kids, um, tell us what the, what, what is the meaning on the signs? Yeah. So I've, I've done the, the challenging task of unmirroring my video so that okay. I think it can read properly so that the letters look correct. So you have four sides to the dreidel. There it is. So you have nun, gimel, hey, shin, which represent Nes, Gadol, Haya, Sham, which means a great, oops, well, it means a great miracle happened there. So that all the dreidel sides reflect back to the original story. Okay. Um, so the way you play dreidel is each, each player uh, takes a turn spinning it, and you have all the gelt in the middle. And so when you spin the dreidel and it lands on Nun, you get nothing and you pass your turn if it lands on gimel you take the entire pot and you win and everybody puts something back in uh if you land on hay you get half of everything that's in the pot and then uh if you land on shin you have to add more to the pot although i guess most recently i learned um in my uh kids preschool you have to do a little dance when it lands on shin which i think is hilarious what kind of dance do you have to do um, he just does a cute little shake. Uh, he's only four, but I love it. <laughs> yeah. right. And how long? And and um, so you you always put in one, and then the 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 pot can grow depending on what happens um, if you spin and you land on um, the the shin, right? Yes, and then everyone just keeps kind of adding to it, and everybody eats the chocolate at the end, and it's a lot of fun. Okay. All right. And how long do these games usually last? Um, probably way past the child's appropriate bedtime. If, okay, if I know okay. anything. And there's a lot of chocolate that's being eaten. I wonder if kids stay up a long time. Yeah. Uh, it really depends on how good you are at parenting. If you can kind of like in a Halloween fashion, negotiate how much candy they're going to be eating at any given time. But right. there's a lot of other um, fun foods that are also connected to the holiday as well. Okay, so tell us about that. What else is connected to the holidays in terms of food? I'm very interested in that. It's my, it's, it's one of my favorite, my, my wife's favorite for sure. Um, so the, the holiday has this uh, theme of oil. So we eat fried foods. Um, so you may have heard of latkes, which are shredded potatoes and onion, and you um, mix them and you deep fry them, and they are absolutely delicious. Um, there is the great debate about what you eat them with, whether it's applesauce or sour cream or ketchup for some people. Um, I personally love to, um, I, I do this, this special recipe where I, I make a whole brisket the night beforehand, and then I shred it. And then I take my, my potato shreds and my brisket shreds, and I mix them together, and then I deep fry those. And let me tell you, chef's kiss. Oh, applesauce and sour cream from the comments. That's all right. So what is it? So why is there a great debate over applesauce or sour cream? Oh, but there's, there's no great cream. debate. There, it's everybody wins when you eat latkes. Really, it's it's you can add anything to it. Uh, my grandmother used to serve them with like a blueberry compote, which is also delicious. Um, it's it's just it's just great. It's it's a great food. Um, so many our, our house um, will just smell of fried uh potatoes uh for the rest of december and maybe a little into january it's just they're they're made non-stop and they're delicious and i eat way too much too many and of is them. that 
is that a problem? Because I don't see that as a problem. Uh, it's only a problem for my waistline, um, which 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 is even uh, more challenging because the other traditional food we eat are called sufganyot, which are um, fried jelly donuts. So these are like the, the two main Hanukkah foods are fried potatoes, uh, fried shredded potato latkes and jelly donuts. And I eat this endlessly over the next eight days and it's delicious and um, dangerous. <laughs> So let's talk about the jelly donuts. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's talk about that because um, that is a traditional, that is considered one of my four main food groups, <laughs> the jelly donut. So how how do uh, do you make the jelly donuts? I buy them because I am I am not that talented. I'll, I'll buy them, but you can you can get them with jelly. You can get them filled with chocolate. Um, but we make our own latkes. That's for sure. Okay, but let's go back to the jelly donuts. For let, let's spend about thirty minutes. I, on, I see you have a preference. <laughs> I have a preference on the jelly. Where do where do you get the jelly donuts? Does it have to be a special type of jelly donut or not? Uh, not particularly. It's again more like conceptual. Um, what is really nice is um, for those who keep kosher, um, the the Krispy Kreme in our community uh, gets kosher just for the sake of jelly donuts. So make sure that everyone in our community has access to them. Um, who kind of keep those um, those dietary restrictions. Mm -hmm. So uh, I highly recommend if you want to celebrate Hanukkah this year, um, eat some jelly donuts and uh, try some latkes. They're great. They're like special little hash browns. They're fantastic. All right. So um, I've never made a latke before, but I assume that there is a, a recipe that I can look up and learn how to do it. endless recipes online um if my wife was here i would i would have her tell you her recipe she it, it was it was i think her bubby's recipe and it's like nothing too complicated but she's very proud of her latkes and they are delicious and i'm going on record so we have people volunteering to eat the extra latkes <laughs> they're, so. they're really really good <laughs> All right, so I'm planning on coming over to your house. Uh, oh my gosh, we would love so, to have you. We're, yeah. uh, we, one of the great things about Hanukkah is because there's eight nights, there's uh, so many opportunities to, to celebrate and to have friends and family um, and even maybe a stranger or a new friend over. Um, this is actually, uh, again, we celebrate all eight nights. This is a great chance to also talk about um, what's happening Monday night. Um, you and Mayor Shulman, your Mayor Shulman, and Mayor Cooper, excuse me, you and Mayor Cooper, um, and so many agencies from across our Jewish community are doing uh, menorah lighting uh, downtown. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I think it starts at four thirty. Uh, yes, uh, four thirty gathering. They'll probably light around quarter of. Um, so again, if you're looking for a chance to kind of take in on what hopefully won't be too chilly of a night, um, Hanukkah, it's just a really great way uh, to, to see the celebration on the second night of Hanukkah. On the second night of Hanukkah. So um, I think they're going to light the menorah tomorrow night and have it ready uh, to go for the, uh, for the second night for the, the lighting at uh, Public Square. I love it. Uh, so the, the, um, the tradition of having people over is that a, um, do you kind of plan that in advance and go, okay, I'm going to have this group of people over on this night and this group of people over on this night? I mean, you know, I would run out of people after about the third night and go like, okay, well, nobody's coming. Now. But I mean, no, how, no. Um, do people just show up? Is that kind of expected or are they uh, is sort of more of an invitational type thing? Um, it's often more of an invitational type of thing, at least if you're coming into a, a person's home, yeah. um, because you don't know if I was invited somewhere else, and that would be a weird night to show up in my house. We'll probably host one for a couple of friends, we'll have our family over, um, but across the community, um, a lot of the Jewish agencies are going to be hosting their own celebrations. Uh, the JCC, I think last Sunday, because there's a lot of things on our calendars, um, just hosted a really wonderful Hanukkah fest. Uh, I think they have between three and 400 people come out to eat latkes and donuts and play games and sing songs. And it's just a really great way of coming together. Um, the synagogues and um, some of the other groups around our community will also have uh, just these gatherings and opportunities, you know, all, all this week. And it's it's just a really great way to, to celebrate. Um, it's a beautiful holiday. Let me, let me ask you this. <clears throat> um, so I've been invited to many seders over the years. Sure. And I, I will go. And particularly there's a community seder uh, that's held 
um, that is kind of a seder for the community as a whole yes. to come gather. And then um, we kind of go through, um, you know, what things mean and, you know, we eat things and then there are parts of the program. Is Hanukkah one of those things that the, that the community, which I would think that a lot of the community doesn't understand exactly how Hanukkah is, you know, works or, or how it's practiced. And um, the jelly donuts thing is a new concept to me and now I'm in. But um, <clears throat> the, so are there celebrations like at the JCC for people like, could people have come last year who don't really understand Hanukkah to understand what it is? Is, is this kind of an open thing or is it more closed? You know, what's really great about the Jewish community is we're, we're very welcoming. Um, the, the Seder you're talking about is hosted by the Jewish Community Relations Council um, and really works to um, connect different groups uh, outside of the Jewish community to the messages that are inside of Passover. Um, with Hanukkah, um, the, the JCC Fest is actually a really great way to celebrate, but it's only one of them. If you're, if you're looking to kind of um, explore um, the Jewish community and all the different types of celebrations. There's a, a Jewish food fest. We have a, a kosher hot chicken festival, if you can believe it. Um, there's a Jewish arts and music festival. And then again, a lot of our synagogues are are very warm and welcoming. Um, I would reach out to them and, and see what opportunities there are to plug in and learn. Um, we often host other community groups to come in and kind of see what's happening. Um, but you know, one, one of the great things that we all love to do is just to, to develop relationships and create meaningful networks. And it really does lift us all up. So yes, is, yes is the answer. Yeah, well, no, I think that's great. And I think um, the more, I mean, I've always felt like the more individuals can learn about um, the culture, culture and customs of, of people, in this city, the better off we'll be. Um, and I think that applies to all the all people who live in Nashville. And so um, I would I would guess, I mean, this is just me talking. Um, I would guess that most people don't fully understand the the history of Hanukkah or um, you know what the celebration kind of means and what happens, you know, as it goes through the eight days. Um, if you don't mind, the, the one thing I would like to point out is Hanukkah, I think, has um, a higher elevation and concept to it in, in the non-Jewish community than it does inside the Jewish community because it's so associated with the, the, the timing of Christmas. I think maybe a lot of people outside the Jewish community just kind of connect them together. Um, mm -hmm. But in the in the uh, realistically, it's actually a minor holiday in, in the Jewish calendar. Um, and if anyone out there was looking to really, th really think about um, Jewish holidays that are particularly meaningful, you would want to look at Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and Passover, um, because unlike Hanukkah, those are days where we might need to take off of work or um, take the kids out of school to really celebrate um, or commemorate those days. Um, and uh, this is like my one like plug that I always want to keep putting out there is that the Jewish holidays um, are available for an indefinite amount of time. If you wanted to know when Rosh Hashanah was going to fall uh, 10,000 years from now, you could actually look up that date. Um, so it's really helpful when we're planning things in our community, um, just to be really mindful of when those dates that are, are really meaningful to the Jewish community and try not to plan on top of them because we want to participate in everything else as well. Well, I, I don't plan on being here in 10,000 years, but, you know, um, but it would be nice to look it up just in case I thought maybe I might have a conflict on my schedule. <laughs> um, the, um, Tell us about those other uh, the holier days. So Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, um, the meaning of those and why Hanukkah, um, most people associate Hanukkah, yeah, because it always falls kind of around Christmas. Right. And it involves gifts. But the other holidays, they're, um, I understand that they're more significant and that's why, but I also don't think people understand them as well. 
it's it's funny you bring up the the gift giving um because gift giving doesn't actually have much to do with hanukkah right we've talked a lot about like these themes of of light and oil but in the story they weren't giving like gifts to each other and so uh, the, I, the gift giving is really an American tradition. They don't give gifts in other parts of the world. Um, and it's really because of its association with Christmas. Um, my four-year-old asked me yesterday, he said, when is Santa coming to give me gifts? And I was like really taken aback by the question. Um, and so the gift giving really, I think, stems from this concept of, of wanting to uh, make sure that Jewish communities, Jewish children maybe, also feel uh, connected to the holiday season. But it's really an American thing that we do. But it's great. Um, we typically, like, we don't get, like, eight crazy presents. It's, like, one really nice present. And then um, growing up, my mom, um, who's probably watching this, was always, like, here's socks and here's underwear and here's something, to, like, educational. Um, so it's we don't go too crazy with the eight nights, but it's it, the gift giving is nice. Okay, so so eight nights. Do you save the best gift for the end, or is there, is does it matter? And um, you know, we were talking about the the um, you know your anniversary present, the fifth fifth year anniversary was wood. But is there any is there any connection to the nights with the gifts? There's there's no connection. Um, but you've you've brought up some really interesting strategy. Um, I think it's good, I mean, to sandwich them, maybe, um, you know, give something really great on the front end, and then kind of build them back up, because you don't want to, you want to end on, on kind of a disappointment, so. I don't want, think I want to end on underwear, but I'm just, Right, that's... right, I mean, hey, if you need it, you need it, but um, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, and, and, you know, it's, it's also, again, this is, a, 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 I think, a good reminder, because um, you were talking about the, you um, meaningful service that you attended this morning that um, Hanukkah is also about, you know, shining this light and, and creating opportunities to, to bring up good causes. And so, um, especially as it falls at the, the end of our calendar year, it's also a great time to think about Sadaka, to think about philanthropy and giving back. Um, one of the gifts that we always, um, I mean, always, my kids are like, you know, four and a half and, and 14 months, but that we give to, to our kids and I give to my spouse, um, is to give a gift of philanthropy. So we'll make a gift to a nonprofit in their name. And that's just another great way of, of connecting this, this time of year to the, the gift giving and the holiday. All right. So again, not necessarily anything tied to any of the nights, nope. uh, but a gift. And what time, when is the gift given uh, uh, during, the, the, during the evening, right? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, after we light the candles, we'll, we'll have dinner and then um, we'll probably give some gifts before, before we go to bed, um, which is never great. Cause then everyone get. I mean, everyone gets hyped for the underwear, but, um, uh, if you get like a really cool toy or a coloring book, it's hard to want to like put that away. So <laughs> the, okay. the great, the great bedtime debate continues. Okay. I, I, I got that. Um, okay. So at the end of Hanukkah on the, the, the lighting of the last candle, um, does, is there something that happens at the end of Hanukkah? Nope. Uh, it's, uh, it, that's it. It's uh, all, all eight days are, are pretty equal, except that we add on an extra candle as we go. Um, and we just keep finding reasons to celebrate and come together. It's, it's a really great community celebration holiday. And, uh, you know, like um, for many people, Christmas, you know, Christmas is celebrated, you know, either Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. And then things slow way down on Christmas night. And then the next day is sometimes a work day. I mean, it just kind of ends. And then, you know, people talk about it, then they start dealing with the next Christmas. Um, same thing with Hanukkah. Is there, is there a, you keep celebrating or is it on that last night, it's one more celebration and then it, and then it ends. And then you look forward to the next Hanukkah. Uh, yes. Although I would argue that I, I think Christmas is celebrated um, the moment that uh, Halloween ends, we start celebrating Christmas because it is everywhere. And I got to tell you, it's beautiful. I love seeing the lights. Uh, my neighbors do something absolutely incredible. Um, and I, I think it's just a beautiful season altogether. But once once we hit those those eight nights to eight nights, that's pretty much it. And we get ready for whatever's next. All right. Well, uh, you're uh, you're dealing with it from a retail standpoint. It, <laughs> 
I noticed the things went up right after Halloween. It's like, wait a minute, we haven't had Thanksgiving yet. Right. I think they, I think they started trying to force the Halloween stuff off the shelf at some point. So, um, um, okay. I guess I was trying to think of it. There was something else I was going to ask you about Hanukkah. Um, so, uh, so I'll go back to, um, something that happened to me when I was on the council, um, as a district council member, there was a, there was a fight. <clears throat> and sometimes we get into the political correctness of things, but there was a kind of a fight over, uh, the lighting of what, what we refer to as the Christmas tree in the Metro public square. And, um, at that point, I think it was dubbed the lighting of the holiday tree. And uh, someone proposed a resolution saying, it's not a holiday tree, it's a Christmas tree. It was a resolution. And um, uh, my background is not strong in this. So I called a rabbi and I said, that, that thing that, <laughs> that the tr leafy tree-like thing that we're gonna light tonight or sometime in the next couple of days, um, this was years ago. Um, I've always referred to it as a Christmas tree. I said, is there, is that offensive to people? Someone said, is there a Hanukkah bush that, you know, do people like that? What is, what is the deal with all that? Um, it's such a great question. Um, for me, for Joel, it's a Christmas tree, but I'll tell you, I, I love Christmas um, and I, I've, I don't celebrate. Um, no one in my family celebrates Christmas, um, but I have a lot of friends that do and I love celebrating with them. Um, mm -hmm. I love Christmas tree lighting. I think they're beautiful. Um, and I love when people say Merry Christmas to me. I, I've never ever once been offended by someone saying Merry Christmas because I really do feel that the intent is to wish someone happiness and wish someone joy. Um, and I don't necessarily walk around like with a, hey, I'm Jewish and I celebrate Hanukkah sign. And so it's it's never been a problem. And I, I think that there's just so much opportunity to spread that love and spread that joy. So I, I love Christmas and all of the, the great things that it brings inside of our community. Um, you know, additionally, it's really nice to, to, to feel incorporated. Um, there are like small ways where They'll, they'll put up a, a menorah, an electric menorah in the office um, next. I mean, it's Nutcracker time, right? So there is Christmas everywhere. Um, and there's a menorah there and I feel really included. Um, or when I'm going shopping and I see like a little Hanukkah section, right? It, it feels really nice that people are also thinking about the Jewish community during this time. Um, but really, I think it all stems down to the, the spirit of giving and the spirit of joy and the spirit of community. Um, yeah, it's great. It's fun. I just, I've, I've never, but people um, I know when they come up and they go, they wish me a Merry Christmas. And then they go, oh, oh I'm so sorry. And it's like, well, I don't really celebrate Hanukkah. I wasn't brought up that way. And so they get all confused and they think they've been offended, but I, uh, or they think they've offended someone. And what I think is the same way you think, which is it's just a way of extending joy and peace and love to everyone. Yeah. Um, and I think, um, you know, I know that there, you can get stories online about, you know, what is Hanukkah and, and things like that. But I've always wondered why we haven't done a better job as a city, particularly because we have such a diverse population of letting people know what uh, Kwanzaa, you know, what does that mean? Uh, what do other people celebrate and what does it mean and how do you kind of celebrate with them? Because I think it's, um, I think in many ways, people just don't know. Well, credit so, to you. We're, we're having this conversation now. So um, this is, this is definitely the right step. It's, there's so many opportunities to get to know people outside of our cultures and outside of our communities. And, and that's such a great way to just to, you know, combat hate and find love. Well, and I, I think that's right. I, uh, let me ask you a very important question to me. If Hanukkah starts tomorrow night, but if I go get jelly donuts right now, is that okay? Um, 
I don't want to admit just how many jelly donuts I've already eaten. Okay, good. So you're kind of ahead. So there's no violation <laughs> of anything, right? No, um, no, no. Uh, not to mention latkes are not um, restricted to just Hanukkah. All- my, my wife makes them year round and they're delicious. And I love you, honey. Okay. Well, this show ends in about 10 minutes. So I'm going to ask you some more questions, but I'll be over at your house as soon as the show ends. I'm looking forward to it. Come on over. Um, okay. So tell me about, um, you, you mentioned that Hanukkah ranks lower in the, in the, <laughs> in the chain of holidays yes. or remembrances that the Jewish community uh, recognizes. So the, the number one, I, I wouldn't say, uh, Oh yeah, I may show up. Yeah, I hope he you know, does. You never know about me, but um, the most important um, remembrance or celebration of, of during the during the Jewish year is what day? Um, so we have we have three holidays that are are really um, I would say the most significant, which is Rosh Hashanah, um, which is the Jewish New Year. Um, and Yom Kippur, which is a day of atonement. Um, and both these holidays will take place in the, the fall window, uh, September, October, again, because they, they adjust with the calendar year. Um, and these are, these are major, major holidays. Um, we, we celebrate receiving the Torah. Um, we atone for our sins for the year, which is, I think, always really interesting because for 24 hours, we will not eat food, we will not drink anything, not even water. Um, and we repent for any wrongdoings that we may have done. Um, and we, we go to our synagogues and we pray. Um, and they're, they're really special moments, but they also require us to not work, um, to take those days off. Um, which is, again, why I, I'm, I'm always really focused on reminding the professional leadership in our community um, to be flexible. Uh, it's really nice that I don't have to work on Christmas Day this year. It's a, a, a nice day to spend with my family either way. Um, but that isn't a holiday that's guaranteed for, for me um, in my workplace. No, again, my workplace is very understanding and they, they allow me to have these um, holiday flex days. So thank you. Um, but yeah. it's really meaningful that uh, other corporations and other companies just kind of consider that as an option um because it affects uh professionals it affects schools it affects a whole bunch of different things um but those two holidays are are particularly meaningful and again you can find them in the calendars you just gotta look it up online um and then in the spring um sometime near easter we have passover which celebrates the jews exodus the israelites um exodus from egypt um, and there's a whole ceremony and we, we will need a two hour conversation to get into Passover. It is um, incredible and uh, also has a lot of great foods associated with it. Well, matzah, the lack, the lack of bread. And the Seder is connected to Passover. Yes, the, the, the Seder is um, this very lengthy meal um, that takes place in a very specific order. Seder means order um, involving uh, prayers and hand washing and specific types of foods um, and lots of praying and four cups of wine. So again, if you're looking for a, a great dinner, um, come on by. So um, for, for people who would like to, to learn, and would like to understand and would like to, you know, take it, uh, I don't want to say take advantage of eating the donuts, but take advantage of, you know, uh, being a part of, of understanding something <clears throat> much bigger than they've, than they've seen before. What's the best way to learn? Is it through the, Jew- I know the Jewish Community Center has different programs going on, um, but if people really wanted to, you know, take a course or learn, what's the best way to do that? It's a great question. Um, there are some wonderful different different avenues to kind of identify that. First, I would just say if you happen to have a friend or someone you work with that is Jewish, I would just say don't don't be shy about asking questions. Um, if they're coming from a, a spirit of wanting to to learn more and understand, those are always welcome. Um, I would recommend uh, reaching out to a local synagogue or our Jewish community center just to kind of learn. Um, 
as I mentioned, our, our Jewish agencies are, are very welcoming, um, very interested in connecting. And if you are a part of a, a church or a mosque or a community group, um, our Jewish community centers and synagogues love to partner and love to work together, whether we're doing community service together or we're um, discussing a topic together. Um, it's, it's a really great way just to connect. Okay. Um, so if, if people are watching this and, um, and obviously uh, there are people on today, but there are people who watch these things over time. Hi, everyone. Um, so um, if people... If people are reluctant to make a call to a synagogue, and there are different types of um, synagogues and different, oh, yeah. yeah, you've got the Orthodox, you've got the, um, the more uh, conservative, you got the more um, liberal. Um, they could, I, uh, my guess is they could call any of them and ask, uh, or they could call the Jewish Community Center. Um, you know, it depends on who they ask, they may be directed in different ways. But again, for people who, um, who may be hesitant, who really are interested, but may be hesitant. I had an individual stop me the other day and had lots of questions about the Jewish community and lots of interesting, just didn't know. And I said, you know what? What we probably ought to do is, is um, call a rabbi and go set up a time, go talk. Um, and he liked that idea. He thought that was good. Um, and so, um, again, if you were recommending to um, an individual, a Nashvillian who just wanted to, to learn, what's the, what's the best place to start? Um, you know, I, I think reaching out to a local synagogue is a great place to start. They will likely have additional and specific resources, um, whether it's um, a community event or a class. Um, that's already happening that they can kind of connect you with. Um, mm -hmm. And it'll just kind of be a, a great first first step just to 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 build that connection. Um, I think oftentimes our our congregations, our synagogues are um, in a good position to welcome someone to come and join them for a, a Friday night service um, and just kind of learn and have a discussion. we we're our we're our community that loves to, um, open our arms and to build these really meaningful connections. So um, it's, we're, I don't know, we're excited to answer those questions and excited to get to know you. Okay. All right. So this is basically a call to anybody who, who is interested um, in, in learning more or understanding that, you know, people do, the, the Jewish community is welcoming and does, and, and wants people to learn more and be a part of it. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I, there's there's a lot of challenging things happening in our community um, here in Nashville and across the country. And I think if we're going to to combat this type of hate, we're going to have to come together and, and do it hand in hand. And I think there's just a lot of just not knowing um, that's preventing us from from being strong. Right. Yeah. Well, um, and someone has posted online that uh, we should invite you back to talk about uh, uh, some of the holy days. On the calendar, we can talk more about Passover and uh, Yom Kippur, and uh, uh, and 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 talk about those things, and um, and and learn more. But um, and in the spirit of the holidays, I didn't necessarily want to get into um, you know the issues sometimes that are facing this country that show up and that are here, and we may want to we may want to have a discussion about that at some point. Uh, in the new year, because we don't, we want, we want people to like each other, not dislike each other. And sometimes I'm not sure why those things happen, but um, that's for, an, that's for another call. Okay. But it's, it's important things that we should be talking about. And I, I hope we do get the chance. Well, I, I think we'll try to set something up for maybe sooner rather than later and, and have that discussion because I, I think we need to. Um, you know, my, my hope for the new year is um, uh, peace and um, love for folks and that we start somehow finding ways to communicate with each other and to um, oh, disappear for a second. Um, no, that we find a, a way to love one another and 
And then we start whatever barriers that we have been creating over the last several years or longer than that, that we figure out ways to start breaking those things down because it's important for all of us. So uh, yeah, and it's and it's a two way street as well. Our community is is just as interested and excited and to learn and grow those connections as well. Well, I think we're all in this together, and so I, I think you may be back on if you don't mind. Um, well, so we are. Um, I really appreciate the time. I've learned quite a bit, and I hope the um, the viewing audience has too. Uh, Joel Abramson is has been our guest. If you want, oh. So uh, we do have enough time for you to go back over one more time, the schedule for the Nutcracker at the uh, National Ballet. Um, so if you're looking to get tickets, um, I would definitely recommend going to nashvilleballet.com. They have the full list of shows. Um, there are two shows today, two more shows on Wednesday, um, a show, or excuse me, Sunday, two shows today, two shows tomorrow, which is Sunday, um, a show Wednesday, two shows Thursday, I think two shows Friday and then one more show on Christmas Eve. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's it's really a magical experience. Um, and thank you for letting me kind of just plug that in. It's, it's sure. beautiful. No problem. Um, so NashvilleBallet.com. Oh, is that it? Um, is that the place to go if you're looking for tickets? That, that's the place to go um, to, to get your tickets. Uh, like I said, it's uh, it, it's been in really high demand, so tickets are limited but not sold out. So I would I would highly recommend getting them. Um, you'll probably see me in the lobby. So please, if you were a part of this, come say hi. Um, it would be great to connect with you. We'll we'll do it, Joel. Thank you. I very much appreciate you being a guest today. Um, happy Hanukkah, uh, and I will. I, maybe I'll see you down there on Monday night because I'm going to be down there as well when we like definitely be there the menorah at public square people are invited 4 30 to 5 15 be there at 4 30 because we'll start and um there will be lots of uh gel there because uh somebody brings it and then i start eating it which is not a good thing but i may bring jelly donuts there you go thank you for having me and, and thank you for all the questions everyone it's been great happy hanukkah merry christmas happy holidays thank you thank you again everybody have a wonderful weekend and um, we will we will not be on until January the 14th when we're going to have the new director of the Arts Commission. So you're going to get a break from us. But everybody have a great holiday season and be safe. Enjoy. Have a great New Year's on, on you know, as we bring in 2023. And um, anyway, Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Whatever you celebrate, I hope you have lots of joy and peace. OK, thanks, Joel. And um, we'll see you soon. All right. So long, everybody.